from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Jean Crane and Thelma Ritter in The Model and The Marriage Broker. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Did any of you ever try to play Cupid? Did you ever attempt to marry off your best friend or even a casual acquaintance? It isn't always easy, as we shall see in tonight's play, The Model and the Marriage Broker. Starring in their original roles, Jean Crane and Thelma Ritter will bring you the amusing situations that arise in this 20th century Fox screen hit. Now, the curtain rises on The Model and the Marriage Broker Starring Jean Crane as Kitty Bennett and Thelma Ritter as Mae Swayze. You can find Mae Swayze on the second floor of a third rate office building in New York City. It's an unusual business she's in, the sort that strikes most people as pretty funny. Mae Swayze is a marriage broker. If you're lonely, shy, tired of being single, See Mae Swayze. She guarantees success. Yeah, that's right. All ages, all creeds, registration fee, 10 bucks. For me, I'm Al Doberman. I work for a newspaper, but I see Mae just about every day. Sometimes to shoot a little pinochle or pass the time of day or pick up an advertisement to put in the paper. It's those ads that keep Mae in business, like right now, for instance. Come on in, ladies. Walk right in. Oh. Well, uh, my name is Mrs. Ginger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is my sister-in-law, Hazel. We saw your ad in the paper, Mrs. Swayze. Well, that's fine. Besides, you were recommended by Mrs. Kratzer. You remember Mrs. Kratzer? Do I remember Mrs. Kratzer? How do you think she got to be Mrs. Kratzer? Take a seat. I'll be with you in a couple of minutes. I got a gentleman in the other room. I want to leave. I don't want to talk to her. Oh, relax, will you, Hazel? Now, she asked about your age, you're 33. And if she wants to know how much money you have, well, pick up one of those magazines and ask for a key to the washroom. I still want to leave. You want a husband, don't you? So sit down like Mrs. Swayze told you to. Mr. Anderson, now where were we? I was telling you about Miss Fink, you say. I like Miss Fink so much. Yeah, well, all I know is she called me up and she said anybody, anybody, but not that big dumb sleeve. Yeah. Now, what happened? She said I had a good bill. She wants the registration fee back. Oh, I've done everything like you said. You took Miss Fink to dinner? Sure, sure. Where? Nedix. Nedix? That's an orange juice stand. They got sausages, too. <laughs> and afterwards, we had a good time. Oh, you went to the movies, huh? No, we, we went walking. Walking in that heat? Yes, 14th Street to 3rd Avenue, then 34th Street. I like to count the blocks. And then back? On the way back, I count the blocks in Swedish. <laughs> oh, I give up. For you, Mr. Johannesson, I could never find a bride. <laughs> Any man that's as dumb as you... Uh, hey, wait a minute. I got a dame here in the files. <laughs> Celia something. She does nuts for walk. <laughs> I should have filed her under the H in Hyken. Wait a minute, here it is. Celia Seaton. Oh, Mr. Johannesson, this gal was made to order for you. No. Oh, five foot six, fond of nature, long hiking trips, bird watching. I can hear the wedding bells already. Oh, she likes to come blocks too, no? Look, you be at my house as usual. Sunday afternoon for coffee, and maybe you better wear your sneakers. Could I see her picture now? Oh, sure, why not? Well, maybe you better wait. She's had her teeth fixed since then. Uh, we'll see you Sunday, Mr. Joannis, and I got a couple of clients waiting in the other room. Sunday? You're sure, yeah. Thank you. Now, about Hazel, Mrs. Swayze. Of course, we just love Hazel, and it's a real pleasure having her living with us. Yeah, sure it is. Yeah, but she's kind of shy with the opposite sex. She blushes, she looks away, she just won't encourage them. How old are you, honey? Um, 33. Last September. How old will she be next September? Well, what do you mean? 34. Well, ladies, if I'm going to be your agent, nobody's going to see what I write down on the paper. So what do I put down? Oh, I never heard of anything so awful in my life. Let's go, Hazel. I don't know why we ever... <laughs> All right, tell her. 41. Well, what's so wrong with 41? A king gave up his throne for a woman that was no ingenue. Oh, well, not that I can get you a king, but there's plenty of fine men that would be very proud to have you for a wife. How much money has she got? Um, you pardon me, please. Oh, my girl's got the key. The second door down the hall. Give her the key, Alice. 
Who needs Mrs. Gingrass? Uh, $4,000. Her father's insurance. These her photographs? Well, those were taken last Christmas. Mm-hmm. Wish you could make it $5,000. Okay, $5,000. Did uh, Mrs. Kratz tell you anything about the... Oh, uh, the registration fee? Uh, yeah, and then when I get a prospect lined up, we can figure out my commission then. Oh, say, I know you have a lot of clients, Mrs. Swayze, but for Pete's sake, get her out from under our feet, will you? I thought Hazel was such a pleasure to have around the house. Well, I'm thinking about her, too. She's so lonely, even though you'd think she'd be used to it by now. Oh, don't kid yourself. You can used to being poor, even to being blind, I guess, but you never get used to being lonely. I tell you what. Yes? You take this paper home with you, see, and get Hazel to fill out all the questions. Just tell her to pour her heart out. Yes, and then what? Then you get her all gussied up for a Sunday date. And see that she comes to my house next Sunday afternoon. From then on, she's my worry. <laughs> Oh, it's me again, uh, Doberman from the newspaper. A little later, May left her office to call on another client, uh, Mr. Wickstead, the optician. May had an idea that maybe Wickstead and Hazel. Well, anyway, when May got there, Wickstead was busy with a customer. Oh, and what a customer. Anybody who wears eyeglasses as well as you do, Miss Bennett, well, it seems a shame you don't wear them all the time. <laughs> well, that's a nice thing to wish on me. It's the highest compliment a man in my profession can pay a lady. Well, how much do I owe you, Mr. Wickstead? Oh, not a thing, not a thing. It was my pleasure. Any time that phone gives you any trouble, why, you just stop in and see me. Well, thanks. Thanks, I will. Well, Mrs. Swayze? I've been having another one of them headaches, Mr. Wickstead. Must be my glasses, huh? Look, you need glasses like a hawk needs glasses. Who do you think you're fooling? Hmm? You've got another listing, huh? Well, who is she this time? All I can tell you is this is just the girl for you. Nice girl, quiet, modest, young, only 33 last September. Yeah, yeah. Of course, she's a little on the shy side, but, oh, she's chock full of personality. And Mr. Wickstead, five grand in the bank. Mrs. Swayze, I'm sorry I ever signed up with you. I've changed my mind. I don't want to get married. No man wants to get married. I'm doing all right as I am. Oh, sure, you've still got a few kicks left. Maybe even a couple of big innings. <laughs> then after that, you'll sit up in the park and watch the girls crossing those windy corners. All of a sudden, someday you'll stop caring even about that. When that time comes, I hope I'm dead. Meanwhile, just be grateful I dug this gal up for you. Dug her up? Don't worry. <laughs> She's not dead, not this one. Hazel's a real live wire. Low voltage, maybe, but steady. <laughs> well, hey, will you look at that? Look at what? Out there on the sidewalk, Mr. Hornbeck kissing Anna Kushner, and Mama Kushner looking on. Another couple that you brought together? Who says I did? I know you. They must be clients. You keep your mouth shut. That boy doesn't know a thing about it. You be at my house Sunday afternoon, Mr. Wicks, didn't you? Get your hair cut first. Well, right then, a funny thing happened. When May walked out of Wicks' shop, she picked up a handbag. Only wasn't the right one. Now, you remember that, Miss Bennett? Well, she had taken May's bag, and here's May walking out with Miss Bennett. Well, that's something to keep in mind for later on. Now, right now, May is on her way to see that young fellow who was kissing kissing Anna Kushner, uh, Matt, Matt Hornbeck. Uh, he's a technician, X-ray laboratory. Well, Mr. Swayze. Well, well, how are you? Hiya, Mr. Hornbeck. Yeah, got it again. My shoulder's so bad I couldn't even lift a flea off a poop. Oh, well, we'll fix that up. Now, oh, Miss Eddie, you can squeeze Mrs. Swayze in, can't you? Well, I'll certainly try. Yeah. Well, aren't you going to say anything? Me? Like what? Well, don't tell me you haven't heard. Why, Ina Kushner. Ina Kushner? Yeah, we're getting married. Friday morning, 11 o'clock. Oh, I haven't I had no idea. You mean the Kushners haven't sent you an invitation? Me? Why me? Well, I met Ina at your house. They're friends of yours, aren't they? In my house, when? Two months ago on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, that was the day I called you over when you burned my shoulder with the treatment. Imagination. It wasn't even red. Oh, and sweet little Ina Kushner can... Oh, I bet you left with Ina, huh? I sure did. She came... She had me over to their house the very next night. Here, look, take this invitation. 11 a.m. Friday. Hotel Lorraine. Hmm. Well, you sure travel in first class, Mr. Hornbeck. Oh, they got big plans for me. Mr. Kushner wants to set me up in my own lab. You don't say. Madison Avenue, right in the middle of the hypochondriac belt. Well, you better get an examination room. I'll see you in a few minutes. Hey, I'll tell the Christians you're coming. Uh, with... No, 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 don't, bo don't bother. I'll be calling them myself. I'll help you, Mrs. Swayze. Just put your thing. You know, kid, I think I'll skip it today. I feel better already. Well, I thought you... Matter of fact, I'm cured. Hi, May. Hi, Do. 
Silverman. You've been waiting long? Nah, just thought I'd stop by your office about your ad. Hey, you want us to run straight through June? Yeah, sure. So, how's business? Yeah. Same old shortage, huh? All I need to retire is a regiment of single men with a good sense of humor. Mm. Hey, you want to sign the order for me? Yeah, I got a pen here in my bag. You know, it's a funny thing. I... Hey, this ain't my bag. I got the wrong bag. Well, whose bag you got? I don't know. Well, open it up and see. Huh? Oh, yeah, I guess I better. Yeah, it's just a lot of junk in it. Uh, a letter. Well, where's the envelope? There isn't any envelope. Hey, hey, listen to this, Silverman. Kitty, my darling, I know I am a heel. Well, go on and read it. What, read some of the day's mail? Give me it, I'll read it. I'll read it. <laughs> I wish I had told you about Louise right at the beginning, but I was afraid to because I was too much in love with you. Uh-oh. I know it isn't your style to go around with a married man, but we need each other. Mm. Oh, brother. We can work it out, darling. I must see you. Please, I must judge. Yeah. Well, whoever she is, there's a dame who's in plenty of trouble. Somebody out here to see you, Mrs. Swayze. Customer, Alan? Uh-uh. Too pretty. Something about she's got your handbag and she thinks you've got her. Oh, well, send her... No, no, wait a minute. I gotta put this stuff back where it belongs. All right, Doberman, out, out. Yeah, how about a little peanut for lunchtime Yeah, tomorrow? sure. Bring some sandwiches. Send the lady in, Alice. Right in there, miss. Thank you. Are, are you Mrs. Swayze? That's right, honey, May Swayze. Well, I don't know how it happened, but I think I've got your handbag. Oh, and I bet this one belongs to you. Why, yes. Yes, it does. I can't imagine how it happened. Whisked it. The eyeglass hand. Whisked it? I saw you there this morning. I put my purse down on the counter. And... Oh, of course. So did I. Well, those things happen, I guess. Thanks for coming by. And... I, I found your business card in yours. Uh, you didn't look in mine? Well, no, no, I didn't. Uh, you see, I didn't even know I got the wrong purse until just now. Well, I hope you'll excuse me, but I'm due back at the store. Oh, sales girl, honey? No, I'm a model. Russick, the print shop. No fool. And, you know, I've never been in a store where they have models. Well, you should drop by sometime. We've got some very good buys in your size. Yeah, wouldn't I look cute floating around in one of them Paris numbers? And why not? Yeah, I'm, I'm a businesswoman. Oh, yes, I, I wanted to ask. What does this mean here on your card? Contacts and contracts. Uh... Well, I'm kind of personal representative to a lot of people. You know, I kind of manage affairs, slip my little advice. Oh, I see. Well, goodbye and thanks. Uh, wait a minute. Well, I, I have got the right purse this time, I hope. Yeah, you got the right purse, but I think you got the wrong man. I, I beg your pardon? Ah, uh, listen, kid, let him go. I know all about those characters that go around telling a girl, you know what I am, I'm a heel. You know what they are? Heels. <laughs> so you did open my purse. You read my letter. I was just looking for your address. Okay, so it was none of my business. And if I saw you walking in front of a truck, that wouldn't have been in any of my business either, but... Ah, look, kid. Let him go. You don't think I'm capable of making my own decisions? I know what I'm talking about. I'm... I'm a lot older than you are. Honey, when people want to alibi their bad manners, I notice they always bring up their age. Well, excuse me. I'll still be late for work. <laughs> Well, that was how the model met the marriage broker. But May didn't spend much time worrying about Kitty Bennett. May had other things on her mind, like Mrs. Kushner, whose daughter was going to marry Matt Hornbeck. For two days, May tried to find Mrs. Kushner. She finally caught up with her at the Hotel Lorraine, right in the middle of the wedding rehearsal. Really, Mrs. Swayze, this is a fine time to... Don't you know there's a wedding rehearsal going on? Looks real good, too, Mrs. Kushner. Congratulations. Now, just what are you doing here? I tried every other way to get in touch with you. All of a sudden, I get the old brush off. I've been very busy. Well, this won't take long. We made a deal, Mrs. Kushner. Five hundred bucks. Get out of here. Oh, just listen to that music. I love that tune. I said get out. Just as soon as you pony up. Well, if you think I walk around with five hundred dollars in my... Of course, Miss. Don't be silly. I got a check right here. All you got to do is sign it. You've got no legal claim whatsoever. I asked my brother. He's a lawyer. And he told you to chisel me out of my commission? Oh, will you please get out of here before you make a scene? I'm just warming up. Wait till tomorrow. You know there's a spot in the thing when the man says, anybody here know any reason why this woman shouldn't be united with this fella? Well, come on. Oh, Mama, Mama, he walked out. He just walked out. Who walked out? Matt. All of a sudden, he, he looked at me and he said, I can't marry you. This is ridiculous.
in just a moment, we will continue with Act Two of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Sam Higginbottom knew the value of that thought. Hearing of a missionary's work in India, Higginbottom decided he wanted to do something to help the poverty-stricken, uneducated natives, too. His idea was to stay there a few months, then return to America to finish his theological studies. But after a year in India, he decided to stay on indefinitely to help the people till their soil and improve their crops. For five years, Higginbottom and his wife, with their limited experience in farming and agriculture, worked hard to modernize the farming equipment and methods in India. Then Sam returned to America to study scientific farming. He interested many people in his Indian project. And by the time he received his Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, he'd raised $30,000 donated by fellow Americans in every walk of life to continue his work in India. When he returned there, Brahmins, princes, the untouchables, all shared equally in Higginbottom's knowledge. In 1928, his Princeton classmates paid his fare back to the States to present him with a Doctor of Philanthropy degree. And in 1940, he was named Doctor of Human Letters. Among Sam Higginbottom's keepsakes is a letter written by a personal friend in India. Your work is more than simple help. It is good nation building. The letter was signed, Mahatma Gandhi. How well Sam Higginbottom had proved that by helping others, you help your country. Now our producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Act two of The Model and the Marriage Broker, starring Jean Crane as Kitty, and Thelma Ritter as May, with Stephen Dunn as Matt. <laughs> It took May about two hours to catch up with Matt Hornbeck, the ex-bridegroom. She found him in a bowling alley. Mrs. Swayze, well, what are you doing here? Where do you get off doing a thing like that? Standing up on a cushion. Uh, that sweet young girl. Look, I'm sorry. I, I really am, but I couldn't go through with it. A few days ago, you were all smiles, just drooling about this beautiful, wonderful... I never said that about Ina. Ah, who's talking about Ina? I'm talking about that x-ray lab on Madison Avenue. That big, new, shiny office. Yeah, well, I thought it over. I'd rather marry a woman. You should have thought of that before you proposed. Look, Mrs. Swayze, I knew it the minute I hit the hotel. First, there was Ina, yapping about what kind of a bouquet she wanted for tomorrow. And then Mama, Mama, with those fangs sticking out. And yeah, then... well, Mrs. Kushner is a fine, handsome, sweet little woman. And I, for one, am proud to know her. What are you grinning about? Oh, nothing. But the only time I ever mentioned your name to her, she... Well, come on, give. She what? Well, she called you a henna head. How do you like that henna head from that old bag? Well, that's gratitude for you. First she hands me that spook of hers to marry off, and then she walks out on my fee. Fee? It's supposed to be cash and carry, only you wouldn't carry. Well, I, I don't get it. What? So tough to get. You didn't think there was something really wrong with my soup bone that day I sent for you? You didn't think Ina Kushner just happened to drop in? Well, yeah, until now. Ah, it's my business. I'm a marriage joker. Holy smoke, don't you even warn people? Yeah, usually. Once in a while, I gotta play it a little sneaky. Well, how do you like that? You know something? Huh? I'm glad. I'm out 500 bucks, and I'm glad. <laughs> Can't you see them cushions? That wedding cake? All the food she ordered? Oh, that old hips will be eating chicken a la king for six weeks. You know how to brain you. Ah, uh, no hard feelings, huh? One of these days you'll meet some good looking babe. I sure hope so, lots of them. From now on, it's just for fun. That's the spirit, kid. Stay loose. Well, I gotta run along. Say, listen, mm -hmm. why don't you stop by my house sometime? We can schmooze, play cards. Yeah, I'd love to. All right, how about next Sunday afternoon? You got a deal. Okay, I'm always home Sunday afternoon. I'll be seeing you, Mr. Hartley. Well, May's place was really jumping that Sunday afternoon. Mr. Johansson, Hazel Gingras, Delia Seaton, and Mr. Wickstead, the optician, and for Hornbeck, <laughs> May had a whole trio, the three ravishing Perry sisters. <laughs> Yeah, May was all prepared. Only when the doorbell rang, it wasn't Matt Hornbeck. It was Kitty Bennett, the model. Hello, Mrs. Swayze. Can I see you for a moment? Are you sure you mean me? Well, come on in. Oh, but, but you've got people here. I, I didn't... About 50-50. Well, I'd better come back some other time. They'll keep. Come on in the kitchen. Hey, I thought you were sore at me. Well, I, I came to apologize. Here's my chin. You can have one free punch. That's not what you came to tell me. Well, not entirely. 
I, uh, I have some rather good news. Oh, you got rid of that bird, huh? Good for you. No, and it just shows how wrong you can be, Mrs. Swayze. He, he's asked me to marry him. Oh? Well, won't that kind of crowd up the old homestead? Oh, but they're going to get a divorce. Oh, well, that's more like it. How'd you work it? Well, I didn't work anything. They, they haven't been getting on for years. He's quarrels and moody. You certainly got the dope on her in a hurry. A few days ago, you didn't even know there was a her. Well, I still don't know too much. That's why he's taking me to dinner tonight. He has a lot of things to tell me. Oh, tonight, huh? Yes, I told him to pick me up here. Well, but the good thing is you didn't move in on the wife. She broke it up herself. Mm, that's right. Yeah, this way you haven't got another woman's unhappiness on your conscience. I... I guess it must be awful for a woman at first. No. First, she's glad to get rid of him. It ain't until afterwards that she realizes he took more than his shirts and socks out the door. He took her pride with him. Pride? Well, maybe so. Oh, a person can't go on worrying about other people's problems. Only just don't get yourself in a spot so when you have your first fight, he can say, you're the dame that broke up my happy home. That's what most of them do. Say, what time is the fella going to pick you up? Oh, somewhere around six, I think. Well, this time yet. Why don't you to meet the folks? Well, thanks. I'd love to. They're uh, all kind of friends of the family. Well. Yeah, well, you just jack up your face, honey, and you'll be set when your fella comes. This way, kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> may seem to forget all about Matt Hornbeck. That's just as well, because he never showed up. At 5.30, she got rid of everybody else, and then somewhere around 6 o'clock... If you'll excuse me, Mrs. Swayze, I think I'll wait for my, my friend outside. He, he should be driving up any minute now. Uh, you're not going to like this, honey, but you know when the doorbell rang a few minutes ago? Well? It was him, Kitty, and I sent him away. Mrs. Swayze. I told him you left ten minutes ago. Well, excuse me for asking, but why? Because you're not tough enough to do it for yourself. That's not true. Listen, you didn't come over here to say I'm sorry to an old bag like me. You wanted a backbone. That's why you came. Well, suppose I am a little afraid of myself. Is that a, a crime? No, it's not enough, honey. You get a man this way, you got a ten percent chance of happiness. Sending him away is no solution. When I get home, he'll be waiting there. Well, then don't go home. Stay here tonight. I got a $90 couch. <laughs> Only don't try t uh, talking things over with him on a rainy Sunday night in a little restaurant where somebody's playing something corny on the violin. <sighs> okay. You'll stay here? If it's not too much trouble. Trouble, she says. Now, come on, we'll find some grub. Can I help you? Sure, you can help. I got cold cuts, knockwork, Jewish right. This way, kid. We'll eat in the kitchen. <laughs> So Kitty spent the night, and Kitty, with all her big problem, went to sleep a lot faster than May did. May was thinking. She just couldn't stand to see a guy like Matt Hornbeck on the loose again. And somehow she had to get Matt and Kitty together. <laughs> Leave it to May. By morning, just after breakfast, she had it all figured out. I tell you, honey, this is the goofiest thing that ever happened to me. I've been through this place with a fine tooth comb. What are you looking for? Did, did you lose something? Yes, my earring. I remember it felt kind of loose when I started to make that omelet for you. Now, let's see. I, I was standing right here, beating the air. Maybe it fell in the sink. Oh, that's the first place I'd look, honey. There's only... Oh, no. Oh, they ought to give me the chair. Why? Oh, baby, how do you feel? Perfect, I, I guess. Oh, look. Does it hurt in your stomach when I press like this? Uh-uh, no. Oh, no, I mustn't do that. That'll make it... Oh, look, honey, we've got to get you to a doctor. Oh, but you don't think I swallowed... I'm afraid to say it. You've got to get x-rayed, honey. There isn't a minute to lose. Oh, that's ridiculous. I couldn't have swallowed an... Sit down now. Now, don't even move. I'll, I'll get you things. We'll take a cab. We'll... Oh, brother, what a schlemiel. Earrings in your omelet. <laughs> I just don't understand it, Miss Bennett. All these x-rays are not a trace of an earring. Well, I told you 20 minutes ago that I didn't swallow it. Yeah. Um, what doctor did you say sent you here? No doctor, Mr. Hornbeck. My friend out there didn't want to waste a single second. Oh, by the way, she's also a friend of yours. Who is? Why, Mrs. Swayze. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Swayze. Well, 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 that explains a lot of things. 
Oh, good morning, Mrs. Swayze. How are you? Did you find the earring? Come on in here. Look, Miss Bennett, I don't know where that earring is, but beyond the shadow of a doubt, it is not in you. There. Feel better now, Mrs. Swayze? Not a bit. Let's go see a real doctor. Oh, come on. Oh, I think she should call one right away. You want to use the phone in my office, Mrs. Swayze? I certainly do. You can get dressed now, Miss Bennett. Right in here, Mrs. Swayze. I got a whole file of doctors. But how are you going to know which one of them is unmarried? Meaning what? Meaning I didn't get to go to your Sunday afternoon coffee clutch, so the coffee clutch comes to me. What are you talking? You don't believe... You... Listen, that kid doesn't even know what business I'm in. Oh, sure, sure. Well, if you're not the most conceited punk I've ever known... Who do you think you are, Hornbeck? Not even a regular doctor. Eighty bucks a week at the outside. Seventy-five. And the prettiest, sweetest girl between here and Times Square is out to catch you. Well, listen, Crumbum. Miss Kitty Bennett happens to be a model in Russick's department store in the French salon, see? And every Tuesday and Friday they have a fashion show, and while she's floating around in them negligees, who do you think is watching her? Just every unmarried millionaire in New York, but she's after bigger game. Yeah, sure. She wants an x-ray man that can't even find a little snook of an earring she swapped. All right, all right, don't blow a fuse. I'm all ready, Mrs. Swayze. Okay, okay, let's get out of here. Oh, but I I've got to pay. Hey, pay who for what? He didn't find my earring, did he? Mrs. Swayze is right, Miss Bennett. You, you don't owe me a thing. Now, look, I'll make a deal. I'll take you to lunch and we'll call it square. Miss Bennett is having lunch alone. She wouldn't think of keeping you from your important work. <laughs> Seventy-five bucks a week. Oh, come on. Uh, Doberman talking. Uh, no, Matt Hornbeck didn't have lunch with Kitty Bennett. But that night he sure had dinner with her. And four or five hours later when he took her home. You know, I'm, I'm glad they closed that place when they did. Another five minutes and we'd have been arrested. The way you danced. Oh, I like it, neighborly, you know, nice and close so you don't lose your partner. Well, we're losing one right now because this is where I live. Hmm? Oh. Yeah, down the steps, basement apartment. Cheery, isn't it? I call it weathering depth. Yeah, yeah very nice. Oh, good night. I had a lovely time. Mm, so did I. Um, so are you tomorrow? Uh-huh. Good night. Good night. Um, why don't we go inside, hmm? Because it's late. Now, I've got to get up early, and I, I, it's really a... Now, why did you do that? Kissing? Oh, impulse, I suppose. You're mad, huh? A little. Look, this is the 10th of May. Would you be mad if I kissed you on the 10th of June? Well, maybe not. I don't then why know. waste a month? <laughs> Look, we're not going to live forever. Why don't we go inside and play a couple of records? Huh? Now, stop it. No, just just get going. But I'm thirsty. Haven't you got a Coke in there? If you want a Coke, there's a drugstore. Just down. They're all closed. Come on, what do you say? Well, I don't even know if I have one. I... Oh, come on in. Hey, wait. What's that by the door? Hmm? Well, it looks like a box of flowers. Oh, put them on the table. Will you, Matt? Mm -hmm. I'll see what's in the icebox. Hey, it looks like roses. A dozen roses. Oh, good. I love roses. Only I mean, there isn't any cards. What'd you do, order them for yourself? Oh, sure, for 2 a.m. delivery. Well, how come there's no card? Here's your coat. I'm afraid it's not very cold. Hey, there's, there's no card anywhere. Hmm. Well, I wonder who could have sent them. Well, you must know. If you didn't, there'd be a card. Oh, I don't. Well, that's goofy. Nobody sends a girl flowers unless he's absolutely sure she'll know where they're from. Oh, drink your coat. I'm not thirsty anymore. <laughs> like a dozen roses and no card. Okay, I'll go. I'm on my way. Good night. Matt? Yeah? The best time to reach me at the store is between 12 and 1.30. They won't put the call through otherwise. Yeah, sure. Good night. Well, the next day I'm in May's office when she gets a visit from Hornbeck, right in the middle of our pinochle game. You play pinochle, Mr. Hornbeck? Pull up a chair. No, I don't, but if you're too busy, I'll come back. Ah, who's busy? Yeah, who's busy? Mr. Doberman, Mr. Hornbeck. Hi. Hi. Well, it's okay, Mr. Hornbeck. I'll go in the other room. Yeah. Well, Mr. Hornbeck? Would you be interested to know who I've been out with? Just fascinated. That friend of yours, Kitty Bennett. Oh, no. Oh, no. That gal's out of bounds for you. Well, look, I want some information. Who's the guy? What guy? Come on, now. Some guy keeps sending her flowers. Big boxes of flowers. Oh, well, what do you know? It's beginning to work. What's beginning to work? Oh, you wouldn't know him, but... 
Oh, he's perfect for her. Good-looking fella. Beautiful home. Security. Belongs to all the right clubs. Just dying to marry the right girl. You told me that Kitty Bennett was a friend of yours, nothing more. Well, she is, but naturally I had a client in mind. Well, you got your nerve. Why to pick her own guy? Where's the commission in that? I gotta make a buck, too. Well, at least give her a break. Tell her what business you're in. You're so hepped up on her, why don't you tell her? Well, we just don't sit around talking about you, Mrs. Swain. <laughs> You want to marry her, Mr. Hornby? Who said anything about that? Not you, brother. Well, who am I to get married? You said so yourself. Seventy-five bucks a week. Well, I know a couple of people who manage on that. Three million right here in this town alone. Well, I can't get tangled up now. I got a future to worry about. Can't you see I'm in no position to get married? Horse feathers. Anybody with four pints of blood that can stand on their two feet long enough to say I do is in a position to get married. <laughs> Listen. Listen, I like her. I'm not saying we won't get around to it someday. Well, I'll make a note of that someday, and if she's available, I'll give you a blast. Thanks. Thanks a lot for helping me out. Come on in, Doberman. <coughs> Gee, ain't he a wonderful guy? Yeah, so what's he mad about? I was asking him his intentions. Oh. Here, cut the cards. You know that cute kid? <laughs> oh, her, huh? In the bag. Well, almost. I thought he was all burned up about some other guy sending the flowers. That other guy was yours truly. Dozen roses, seven fifty plus tax. Are you nuts? And which one of them pays the commission? No commission. Oh, I don't get it, May. Hey, you are up to your neck in debt. You can't even afford airmail, and you're throwing money away. All right, so it's crazy folly. Look, Doberman, I spend so much time with tired people, trying to fix them up, trying to fan the embers. Give me a prairie fire for a change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go on, play, play. We'll continue shortly with Act Three of The Model and the Marriage Broker. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of The Model and the Marriage Broker, starring Jean Crane as Kitty, Thelma Ritter as May, with Stephen Dunn as Matt. Well, about a week or so goes by, see? And then one day, just before closing, May has a visitor. Yeah, it's Kitty Bennett. Only Kitty's got a funny look on her face. She's mad and she's hurt. Well, come on in, kid. Am I glad you're here. You know, it's time you and me got our heads together. I know all about you and Matt Hornback. Oh, I'm sure you do, Mrs. He's Swayze. He's quite a handful, huh? Of course, the only catch is he don't want to get married. How'd you like the roses I've been sending you? Oh, so that's where they've been coming from. Well, it all adds up, doesn't it? Now, for a whole week, I don't want you to see him. Let him call you, let him wait for you. You're just busy, see? Anything else, Mrs. Swayze? Huh? What do you mean, honey? Why didn't you tell me you ran a, a place like this? Oh, I don't know. You think I should have? Before messing around with my life? Yes, I think so. Oh, well, it ain't as bad as that. You talk like I sawed off somebody's crutches. Oh, it's the most awful thing I've ever heard of. This whole business or whatever it is. I don't know why you're making such a stunk. Nothing wrong with it. Getting people together for money? For a commission? I wasn't going to take a dime from you two. This one was going to be on the house. Well, thank you, Mrs. Swayze, but I don't want to grab a man who doesn't want to get married. I'm not that hard up. I won't have you tricking Matt Hornbeck into any... It ain't tricks, kid. He loves you. By special arrangement of May Swayze. Success guaranteed. I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Just take my name off your books. Ah, oh, look, kid, I... I know I botched things up, but I could see you were heading for trouble. I'd have done the same thing for my own daughter. Yes? Well, go get yourself another daughter. <laughs> Late that afternoon, just as she was closing up, somebody opens May's door. Somebody she hasn't seen for a long, long time. That's right, May. It's, uh, it's me. It's Emmy. Yeah, I can see it is. Well, Emmy, you haven't gotten any younger the past 20 years either. Well, I, I know it's awful nervy of me to come to see you, of all people. You, uh, uh, you knew Frank had passed on, didn't you, May? I read about it in the papers. 
Look, Emmy, I'm leaving town for a while. I got no time to talk to you. But it can't be so painful to you now, May. It's so many years back. I don't get my husband stolen from me every day in the week. What do you want, Emmy? Make it fast. Well, I, I'm just out of touch with everybody. I, I don't know who to turn to. What good does it do me? A nice house and the money and everything. You don't know what it's like to be so alone. You taught me all about that, Emmy, 20 years ago. But you're a strong woman, May. You know everybody. Everybody's your friend. Oh, tell me what to do. Help me. I'm not asking you to do it for nothing. Uh, treat me like, uh, well, like any other customer. Wait a minute. You're coming to me for a husband? I, I wish you wouldn't put it that way. Uh, if I could just meet some people. Well, well. Emmy Boyle on the prowl again. <laughs> you didn't used to have to worry about getting fellas? Well, the fellas our age are all dead or they're married. <laughs> oh, you hate me. I know you hate me. No, not anymore, Emmy. Matter of fact, I got reason to sort of like you. I feel as though you'd given Frank back to me again after all. Then you will do something for me. Oh, look, go to one of the other places. There's plenty of marriage brokers in the phone book. Oh, but me, I, I, I couldn't. I, well, I just couldn't go to one of those places. Well, I'd die of shame. Yeah, I heard that before. Sorry, Emmy, but you're out of luck. Me. Oh, it's nothing personal. It's just all of a sudden I decided to get away from the joint for a while. Maybe even for good. Too many people want to die of shame when they have to deal with somebody like me. Stop by again, Emmy. In another 20 years. Yeah, May really went away. She sent me a letter from a place called Sharon Springs. There was a key in the letter. Would I stop by the office once in a while and see about a mail? Well, I'm in there picking up the bills when Kitty Bennett walks in. You're Mr. Doberman, aren't you? That's right, Miss Bennett. Mrs. Swayze isn't here? No, she's out of town. She might not be back for quite a while. Oh, is, is anything wrong? Yeah, plenty. And you ought to know you gave her quite a joke, Miss Bennett. Oh, now, just a minute. I, I have nothing against Mrs. Swayze, even though she... Well, I just despise this business she's in. Oh, now, hold it. You're talking like a chowder head. ahead. Hey, what do you think she did? You think she sat down one day and said, Well, I think I'll make myself some dough off these poor, lonely suckers. No. No, when Mrs. Swayze's marriage went on the rocks, that was the loneliest dame on earth. Only somebody as lonely as she was could know how many more there are of the same kind. You want to know what you were to her? The daughter she never had. The kid she missed out on. That's how come you could kick the pins out from under her so easy. So congratulations, Miss Bennett, and a good, good morning to you. Well, I think about Kitty Bennett all day. Later, I call her up at Russick's to tell her I'm sorry I'm so rough on her, and they tell me she's gone. Miss Bennett is left on a vacation. I guess Matt Hornbeck found out the same thing, only he don't give up so easy. A few days later. All right, now. You can just go away. About time you came up, Freya. Do you know how many times I've been here ringing this doorbell? You woke me up. Good. I figured if I got here early enough, I'd catch you off guard. Now, what goes on? First, I hear you're on a vacation. I am. Somebody says you've gone to some resort, Sharon Springs or something. Well, I, I was. And will you please leave? I'm expecting someone. At 8 o'clock in the morning? Look, Matt, maybe we can talk some other time. Right now, I don't I... know what's wrong. Where you been? Out of town. On, on business. Well, you're back now. Why don't you call me? Oh, don't think I haven't wanted to, but where would it get us? You not wanting to get married? Not that I blame you. Oh, so that Swayze's been shooting off her face again, huh? It has nothing to do with her. I, I understand how you feel. You have a career. Yeah, you? sure, career. Snapping pictures of other people's stomachs. You don't want to be a hired man all your life. You want to be someone on your own, and you, you don't want to be nailed down. You can't afford to be. Look, lots of people in this town manage, about three million of them. Yeah, maybe that's why some of them are so unhappy. Oh, Oh, you'd like to wait around for something better, huh? I'm trying to be sensible for you. Oh, Kit, you talk like a professor. Don't we love each other? Oh, that's why I didn't want to talk to you, Matt. Suppose I answered yes to that right now. Oh, Matt, you've been tricked. Tricked, huh? Every way. We haven't been seeing each other. That's a trick. And we're together again. That's a trick. If, oh, if I were to rush right into your arms this minute, and you kissed me and said, I want to marry you, that would be a trick, too. Oh, now, look, sis. It's about time you stopped overrating those kisses. You know, every time you pucker up, it isn't a secret weapon. I just happen to like you, that's all. I want to marry you. 
Yeah, so maybe I won't be my own boss for a while. A long while. But I'll be happy. I have you around the boss. Oh, kid, I love you so much I could... Well, fine, you got company. Oh, dear, and this is important, too. Important? Just don't forget what you were talking about. Hiya, kid. This is Swayze. Hey, Tabby, don't put your flag up yet. I could get thrown right out of here. <laughs> Did you get my telegram? Half an hour ago. First thing I wanted to do was come around and apologize. Apologize? Do you want me to slug you? No, don't be silly, kid. You were right. Romance is something that's got to happen to you. Unexpected, like falling down a manhole. <laughs> Setting it up for people that's strictly for tourists. Oh, Mr. Hendrick. Yeah, it's me. And before you start lining up any prospects, she's already taken. Oh? Well, sometimes those put-up jobs turn out, but maybe I think it's better if it happens to you. All of a sudden, you know, boom! <laughs> well, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Good luck, kids. I gotta get going. Now, just wait a second. I want to look at you, Mrs. Swayze. Something seems kind of different. Uh... You don't think this dress is too young for me? Well, it's simply lovely. It's exactly right you for think you. You think so? Hey, we're going to talk about clothes all day? Oh, uh, Matt, you do at the office. Pick me up tonight. Right? I am not due yet. Well, i got to go anyway. i got to get a manicure. Manicure? New dress. What's happening, Mrs. Swayze? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I just thought I'd spruce up a little bit. Uh-huh. Something's cooking on the back burner. Hey, Matt, how about running into the kitchen and getting us some coffee, huh? The best cup of coffee you two gals ever had. Well... Okay, so I might as well tell you this. Some guy I met at Sharon Springs, Mr. Chancellor, he's gone clear off his rocker about me. Why, that's wonderful. That's crazy. How do you like the new hairdo? Don't you think it takes years off? <coughs> well, a couple of months, anyway. <laughs> years. How old do you think he thinks I am? Oh, what does it matter? Forty. How much did you admit? Thirty-nine. <laughs> but he, he's going to marry me whatever he wants. He don't care about anything. All he wants to do is just slap away on the wings of love. Well, when's it going to be? <laughs> you don't think I'm taking it serious, do you? And why not if he's a nice man? He's, well, he's all right. I guess he's the big news up in New Brunswick, <coughs> wherever that is. He's got a fleet of boats. Owns a house on a peninsula. He even owns the peninsula. <laughs> well, then, set the day. Ah, I don't know. He's blue on the square side, but we had a lot of fun of it, Sharon Spring. Oh, were you there, too? Oh, the coffee. I, I thought you were... That's doesn't it, honey? What do you mean, Mr. Hornbeck? Was I there, too? Oh, that's where Kitty was. That's uh, this way, Matt. You're getting out of here and going to work. Any more cracks like that about Sharon Spring, then I'll shoot you before I have a chance to marry that's you. That's all I wanted to hear. Thanks, baby. I'll see you tonight. What were you doing at Sharon Springs? Oh, I just happened to be there. This is me, honey, old lady Swayze. Oh, all right. Suppose I did bring him up there. Mr. Doberman approved. Well, no, you mean you ran into Mr. Chancellor? Up at your office, yes. He's seen your ad, and, well, it, it seems such a shame that just because you weren't around to help him find someone. You dragged Mr. Chancellor up there? <laughs> well, why not? There's a little marriage broker in all of us, and there should be. Years younger. Nothing. Dressed up to look like lamb. <laughs> oh, and in case you're interested, Hazel Gingras and Mr. Wickstead, they're getting married next week. Now, about Mr. This Chancellor, This is I... one for the book, all right. My big dream. Shopping around for a wife in a lousy joint like mine. Now, you listen to me. You happen to be a yes. very fine darling for my own routine. <laughs> I ought to eat, see a head shrinker. Oh, he's just a man for you. And you're just what he's been looking for. You'll never be lonely again. Lonely. I'm glad you reminded me. Out there on that peninsula. Nobody to talk to but a bunch of seagulls. How lonely can you get? Will you please stop yapping and listen to me? I got news for you. That guy, Chancellor, bores the life out of me. You know what he said to me when I tried to teach him how to play pinochle? I said he couldn't get the hang of it. So you're teaching? Oh, nobody ever learned to play pinochle after 50. But if you're lonely... Listen, honey, nobody scratching around to keep other people from getting lonely ever gets lonely. Now put that under your pillow. Oh, but he's such a nice man. You can't let him down. I'll take care of him. Seriously, he needs a wife. Yeah, he mentioned it. And I got just the girl he's looking... Excuse me, honey, I gotta use the phone. Annie Boyle and Mr. Chancellor. What a combo. But 30 minutes later, May was back in her office sitting behind a desk. And next to her, all out of breath and excited, was her old pal, Emmy. Yeah, Emmy, I've been thinking.
thinking quite a lot about you lately, and I finally located just the right man. No. I'll do the talking. Say, have you got a dress that doesn't look like you're going to a fancy funeral? Oh, you got a Well, put one of them on and go easy on the rouge, no duck on the fingernails. You're going to a matinee at the 43rd Street Theater. There'll be a ticket for you at the window under the name of Chancellor, and the man you'll be sitting next to is Mr. Chancellor. I'll be right at the best. Who knows? Anyway, you'll be there. He's got great big blue eyes. Tell him I was unavoidably detained. Really? What did I do next? Well, if I remember correctly, Emmy, I think I can leave that up to you. Hey, May! Hey, I just got back. Hiya, Doberman. Hi, I... Oh, you're busy. I'll see you later. No, no, we all through. Get going, Emmy. Oh, May, you're an angel. Oh, how can I ever thank you? Well, I'm not doing this for old Lang Syne. How much did Frank leave you? Well... Well, never mind about that now, but if this goes according to schedule, brace yourself, Emmy. Brace yourself for quite a bite. Yes, May, yes. Me? What's he buy? He's a very nice fellow. I almost took him myself. Now, go ahead. Give him the business. Yeah, feel like a little pinochle, May? I got the cards. Start shuffling, though, me. Mm. You were smart, May. That chancellor guy wasn't right for you. Uh, who knows who's right for who? Well, you see, May, what you need is somebody more suave. Uh, like, take me, for instance. With a little polish, I bet you and I could hit it off... All right, all right, come on, play. In a minute, our stars will return. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Perhaps one of our greatest ambassadors was the humorist, Artemis Ward, who did a great deal to cement the friendship between America and England. In 1866, Artemis Ward arrived in London for a series of lecture tours, although he wasn't in the best of health. After his first lecture, an English newspaper wrote, there is certainly this foundation for a cordial understanding between the two countries calling themselves Anglo-Saxon, that the Englishman, puzzled by Yankee politics, thoroughly relishes Yankee jokes. When two persons laugh together, they cannot hate each other much, so long as the laughter continues. As Artemis Ward continued his tour, in his own humorous way, he criticized both England and America, and the cordial understanding grew between the two countries. Although his health grew worse, Artemis Ward refused to abandon his tour, and he didn't stop until he collapsed in the middle of a lecture. Within a few days, he was dead, at the age of 33. In announcing his death, the London Observer said, Artemis Ward never used his great powers of humor for that biting purpose which is implied in the word sarcasm. He's been a man not only of humor, but of good humor. There is no man among us who does not feel that he is the better for having known him. Since his landing in this country, he was taken by the hand in a feeling of brotherhood between our two countries. So it was that Artemis Ward proved to all America that by helping others, you help your country. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And we offer our congratulations to the model and the marriage broker, Jean Crane and Thelma Ritter. <laughs> Why, you're in the class by yourself. Hmm, that's a compliment, Thelma. Just think, in my last picture, I was starred with ten other stars. Ten stars? I'd call that a full house. Well, it's O'Henry's full house, Irving. Five stories by O'Henry. Filmed by five directors with 11 top stars from 20th Century Fox. So it really is a full house. Seems to me you've got quite a full house at home, too, haven't you? <laughs> yes, Thelma. Three boys and a brand new baby girl. That's why we call her a model girl. A beautiful actress, wife and mother. Well, I'm a wife and mother, and I want to be a glamour girl, too. Well, I'm sure Daryl F. Zanuck would give you a chance if you'd just ask him. Yes, Thelma. Why didn't you ask for a part in his new Technicolor production, The Snows of Kilimanjaro? I was dying to, but I couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> Well, for glamour, don't miss seeing it. It stars Gregory Peck, Susan Hayward, Ava Gardner, Hildegard Neff. Neff said, I think I'll stick to character. <laughs> and that's good news for all of us. And Thelma, be sure to listen next week. We're going to present an actor who's done some of the finest characterizations in pictures. I refer, of course, to James Mason. And as his co-star, we'll have his charming and talented wife, Pam Pamela Colino. They will bring you the exciting real-life story of a notorious spy. It's a 20th Century Fox intriguing drama of five fingers. Well, that will be a wonderful show, Irving. Good night. Good night. Good night. We are both wonderful.
This is Irving Cummings saying good night to you from Hollywood. Uh -huh. Our cast tonight was Stephen Dunn as Matt, Jack Cushion as Doberman, Martha Wentworth as Mrs. Jingris, Hans Conrad as Johansson, Verna Felton as Mrs. Kushner, Charles Cantor as Wixted, Ruth Parrott as Emmy, Gail Barney as Hazel, Barbara Fuller as Ina, and Tuta Marsden as Alice. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, Ken Carpenter, reminding you to join us again to hear... Five Fingers, starring James Mason and Pamela Colino. The Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpen inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.